Hi, welcome to my lab. Out the promotion time. I loved my previous doll I made for Mermaid 2023, where I gave her dark skin color and painted on neon bright features. I want to do this again. Like? No. I have couple ideas for dolls in this aesthetic, but one sudden inspiration hit me like a lightning bolt. A scratch coloring doll. For those who don't know, scratch coloring is a type of art when picture is made by scrapping black layer, revealing color for background underneath. I never tried it on my own, but I am very curious whether it is possible to make a doll. For my victim, I chose Draculaura. I want a doll with round hairline. Also, she has got this stage 2 glue staining on her head, and even someone already trimmed plastic seams on her legs, so she will be perfect for this project. Without further ado, let's bring her to my Murin Spa, where each doll is treated like a queen. Our facility takes care of even such miserable dolls, helping them to leave their past behind. As always, we are starting from the bolt cut. Next, we are softening the head using shrouding technique for easier decapitation. We don't want to have any more accidents in your spa. It looks like it was a good call. Extraction, we are giving her quick relaxing bath in isopropanol to remove the rest of the sticky brain tissue, sometimes called glue. We cannot forget about the deep cleaning acetone face mask. Beauty in spa, everything for dolls who wants a new start. With exactor knife I removed her molded underwear. Usually I am not doing this, but this time it may stay on my way while scratching, so off they go. When I removed the largest pieces with knife, I sanded the rest with sanding blocks to smooth the surface and remove the glossy top from her whole body. I put her head back to the body and sprayed her with white base coat with my airbrush. Paint wasn't covering her in the way I wanted. I even changed the airbrush, but it didn't help, so I just continued, thinking that I just diluted paint incorrectly. After applying the base coat, I started adding colorful splotches, starting from yellow, the brightest one. Next was red, green, blue, and purple, keeping the splotches as random as possible. The next day, when paint dried, I took a closer look at the results and I hate it. I had this issue also with my fluffy anglerfish mermaid. Sure, my airbrush gives some sort of grainy texture, but not to the degree when colors didn't blend properly. It turned out that my compressor had very low battery and after charging it overnight, it worked like gold. I added orange and off-camera I saturated all colors and covered white spots. I added few drops of gold alcohol ink for some more shine and covered her with glossy varnish. She already looks incredible and I could leave her like this, but I am not done yet. My initial idea was to cover her now in coat of black paint and gently scratch the top layer, but when I did tests on my mannequin doll, it didn't work as I planned and it was so scrappy looking. Who's scruffy looking? I didn't want to give up on scratch coloring aesthetics, but I decided to try a different approach. I covered her body with various materials, ribbon, laces, washi tape and even chains to make an interesting pattern. And with this, I covered her with black paint using my airbrush. Of 
Okay, time to unravel her. Time for face! Mm, so pretty! I love that all details from lace are so sharp. Wow, she looks amazing! Way better than I would get with scratching. In few spots paint chipped, so I gently covered them with black paint. At first I wanted to have glossy color spots and matte black top layer, but the difference is not as dramatic as I expected. Plus, I liked how shiny she was before, so I covered her with couple layers of gloss varnish to have it back. For her face-up, I am going pretty simple this time. Her design is already busy, so simpler face-up will stand out more. I am giving her white eyelashes and white pouty lips. I went straight with paints because I couldn't sketch her features with white watercolor pencils on her glossy face. I think that now I would cover her eyes area with matte varnish and do the pencil sketch. But well, past me wasn't that clever and struggled a lot with second eye and end with wonky one. I painted her scleras black to help her eyes stand out a bit. As finishing touch, I painted gold her eyes, freckles which nobody can see, and waterline. And this is all for the face-up. Yes, she has got no eyebrows. For her outfit, again, I am going for something simple but chic. I started from this rectangle from Black Velvet. First, I sew the pouch on one side and then slid their elastic. Then I sew it on the top, making skirt with sexy cut on the one side. To prevent it from moving up, I added rubber ribbon in her crotch. I cut the skirt on the other side of her body, because two sexy cuts are better than only one, and skirt is done! For the top, I used my bodice pattern I made for my autumn girl. This is my most sewn garment, I use it also for my winter fantasy creature. I made it from stretchy net fabric, so her colorful torso will be still visible. It still needs some more sparkle, so I glued to it black rhinestones. I added also some more from this set of black decorations. I found that these roses with golden rims, which will fit her perfectly. When glue dried, I gently removed the top from my mannequin doll. I covered her first with kitchen foil, so rhinestones shouldn't be glued to her body. However, some of them came off, so I just glued them back. <laughs> Off camera, I gave some glam to this old Draculaura shoes and outfit is done. She absolutely slays bald look, but she needs some hair. I didn't have any specific idea for her hair besides of being short and black. After discussing it with my parents and friends, I decided to give her curls. I prepared black acrylic yarn in my usual way and the indi- <sighs> Bende cierpić. I prepared black acrylic yarn in my usual way and individually curled strands using toothpicks and hair straightener. Oof, it took me five minutes to properly pronounce this sentence. <laughs> then I stabbed the curls into her head using my rerouting tool. And now I just need to do this for whole her head. It will take forever. <laughs> One eternity later. And here she is with her head full of curls. 
This time, Count of Broken Needles is 3. Now she needs only white false lashes. I know that she already has painted on lashes, but I'm inspired by pigeon dolls who have got both painted on and 3D lashes for this extra volume. I think we have got everything now, and now it's time for the final assembly. It's been a while since I did this. So, meet my scratch coloring inspired doll. Even if my method didn't work as real scratch coloring, I am still very happy with the effect. I love how elegant she looks. Compared to my recent dolls, she is a small and simple project which took me a portion of time I spent on the others. Sometimes I am fixed on thinking that I need to do something big to stand out, but that's not always the case. Simple projects can be cool and effective too, now I know that. What do you think about her? Do you like my take on scratch coloring project? Do you want to see more dolls in this style? I am feeling very experimental recently. And this is all for today, see you next time, bye!